Fox News is pro-imperialist. I don't think that's a statement that anybody would really disagree with. Now, here's a good example of that. Just recently, Sean Hannity, on his show on Fox News, came out and basically said that the United States should give weapons to the protesters inside of Iran. Now, he said this on his program with John Bolton, who was a former uh, UN ambassador to the UN, and uh, a guy from Iran that seemed like a complete shill for U.S. imperialism. You have helped organize what's happening today. You are in touch with them every day. How do you win a revolution without weapons? when you have the, the Cuds, the, the Revolutionary Guard, and the other military. I don't know many, many revolutions that win, win with slingshots and baseball bats if people aren't armed, Ambassador. My fear is we will wake up to a massacre of a lot of these young students. That is a fear that I believe is quite legitimate, sadly. I think in the immediate near term, they need communications help inside Iran because the uh, government has been effective in shutting down or slowing down the Internet. I think they need finances so that they can uh, communicate better inside Iran, and ultimately they may need assistance more than that. Uh, this program was filled with so much nonsense, it was absolutely unbelievable. At one point, Sean Hannity claimed that radical Islamic mullahs were trying to get their hands on nuclear weapons. Which is really strange considering that it's the Ayatollah and the democratically elected leader of Iran that keeps signing agreements not to build nuclear weapons. Now, the stance of Fox News is that, of course, it, it, Iran is a Islamic fundamentalist country, but it's odd that, that if that's what he claims, then wouldn't they just be building the nuclear weapons, then repeatedly signing agreements to not build nuclear weapons? It seems like he got his wires crossed on this one just a bit. And having John Bolton there back him up is, well, it, it, frankly, it's pretty funny. John Bolton is such a tool of U.S. imperialism, he still believes the Iraq War was a good idea. Now, of course, he denies that it was really just an excuse to go in and steal their resources. It was really just a part of U.S. imperialism and uh, global spheres of influence in general. But even if we believe the cover story that it was a right thing to go in and save the Iraqi people, he still claims that was a good idea, when it most certainly was not. It led to the death of a million and a half people, to an unending occupation of the country, and ended up uh, causing ISIS to be there. This is just one of those things where... When Fox News lies so much, your head almost wants to explode. Now, think about this. I have heard leftcoms say that. I have heard leftcoms say, oh, we should, we should like, start a thing to give weapons to the protesters inside of Iran. Now, think about what you just did. You just sided with Fox News. Now, I know a lot of them tend to be buddy-buddy with uh, some questionable characters on the internet, but that is a whole new level where you're at the point where you're actually advocating the same thing as Fox News. And not even just, you know, the, the same thing for a different reason, for the same thing and the same purpose. It's one thing to say, like a leftist who believes in, in gun ownership and a rightist who owns gun ownership, and these are for two different reasons. But what if they were the exact same reason? That's essentially what leftcoms are doing right now. It is, it is astounding to me that over and over again, these you know, so-called anti-imperialist leftists can keep finding themselves on the side of U.S. imperialism something pops up that tries to overthrow the government of Libya, and I even made a mistake by supporting them. But I acknowledge that it was a mistake, as opposed to these people who don't. They just mindlessly cheerlead them. I looked into it, and I was still wrong. But I acknowledge that I was wrong. Then Syria happens, and they jump up and they start celebrating the situation going on in Syria. You've got goddamn trots running around supporting ISIS and Al-Qaeda inside of Syria. 
because they believed it was a spontaneous uprising and that somehow this was connected to what permanent revolution if you can even find two tribes who agree on what the definition of that even is you got the, the, the fucking socialist alternative with Kashama Sawant supporting goddamn ISIS well, not her specifically but her organization supporting ISIS because they believe it's a spontaneous uprising and it isn't amazing how this happens over and over and over again in the exact same formula all the time and they keep falling for it there's a there's a, a, a portion uh, opposed to socialism inside of Venezuela. And, of course, left comms and trots jump all over it. Oh, we should support them in their fight against the, uh, you know, democratically elected government that's opposing U.S. imperialism. It, it's amazing how, how bad. And, and, and don't, don't get me wrong. This is first worldism at its finest. Always, you know, it's... it's it just it it really blows my mind sometimes that that these so-called leftists can can fall for the same thing over and over again and they just still keep doing it when you're finally at the point where you find yourself with on the same side of US imperialists and you find yourself on the same side with Fox News not just with the same idea but the same goal as well, you really ought to start taking a look at your ideology and questioning whether or not really this is the right thing to be doing. Right now, we've got the media going out and showing video of pro-government protesters, which are 10 times the size of the anti-government protesters, and then having the Western media, CNN, Fox News, doesn't matter, whatever, going off and showing that as anti-government. Now, you see, you're not really fooling anybody who can read Persian. They can read the signs that are pro-government and then trying to pass them off as anti-government. The people out there protesting in support of the government are not so much there in support of the government, but opposed to the violence that's being used by MEK provocateurs inside of the country. The people of Iran don't want this. They don't want these these terrorist psychos coming in and just uh, mindlessly murdering people for the sake of trying to overthrow the government of Iran. No, I don't like capitalism either. But that's not the point. The point is for Iran to decide its own destiny, and it's not going to do that if the government is overthrown and replaced with something that is pro-U.S., which is exactly what is attempting what the U.S. is attempting to do right now. And it's it's sickening that there's so many so-called leftists that are just bandwagon jumping right on this and cheering on the destruction of the Iranian government. I mean. I'm getting so much to say, oh, well, you're on press TV. That's the only reason you're saying it. As if the analysis that I gave in the previous video on the subject didn't speak enough. I mean, my roots are still in Maoism, even though I am a third worldist. That includes Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, third worldism. Which means we still understand the Maoist principle of primary and secondary contradiction. Something these first world Maoists just seem to kind of just completely forget about. It becomes, you know, just fuck every government possible. Like anarchists. They act, they act like anarchists. So as soon as any anything happens anywhere in the world, it's, oh, it's overthrow the government. I mean, without even a critical look at what's going on. For example, inside of Iran, where it is very, very obviously U.S.-backed provocateurs that are causing us damage. Yes, there are legitimate economic grievances, but this violence is coming from M.E.K., supporters and other U.S. backed groups. It was the same thing with Syria. Was with, with, do you remember when, with, with the New York Maoists? Carlos Rivera was running around, around with this stupid line, neither Assad nor the rebels. Which, if he's supposed to be the leader of the New York Maoists, you'd think he'd want to understand, you know, Maoism of primary and secondary contradiction. The primary being imperialism, and once that's defeated, then it becomes socialism versus capitalism. But no, he didn't understand that. And absolutely no way is he the only guy who did it. 
all of them, all the first world Maoists made the same thing. They all wanted to say, screw the government in Syria because they wanted to believe in an uprising no matter what, which is why a lot of them actually LARP doing revolution in the first world because they want to believe that it's happening when it's not, that they end up completely disposing of any critical analysis of what is going on in those countries. Now, for the longest time, I said nothing about Syria until I was absolutely certain what side should be taken. And I will be the, the first to criticize myself to say that I took way too long in doing so. I should have been on the right side from the beginning, but hindsight's twenty twenty. But now that we know, we know these patterns, we know how the United States acts in these situations, we can see the formula just completely running its course again legitimate concerns over the economic hardships and of course there's going to be hardships they've got a ton of sanctions on them and no country is going to be perfect there's always going to be problems but how does that translate in the minds of first worlders because i know why it does in fox news and the mainstream media that that automatically means that the people want to overthrow their government you know that they really believe that that, that this is like a this is like a, a Western thing, that as soon as somebody's upset or protesting into the country, that automatically means they want their government overthrown. Like, they could be asking for the most bland liberal reform, and they would believe that it's an insurrection. That's why there's mass amounts of people protesting against the people protesting that are calling for that, when that's not what the public wants. It's strange how these left comms keep finding themselves on the same side of the bourgeoisie while completely pointing the finger at everybody else, saying, oh, you're reactionary, you're reactionary, you're a, vision, you're a visionist, you're not my pure, absolute version of Marxism that, you know, repeatedly failed and has really no ideological ground whatsoever. Now, I don't mean to rag on the left comm so much, but this is a thing that they keep doing all the time. We just keep seeing imperialism attacking country after country after country. And it's amazing how this happened right after the Syrian war is over. Yeah, it's almost like, like clockwork. Like, you would have to be a fool to think that that's just a coincidence. That as soon as it's over in one theater, it starts up in another. Like, come on. I mean, it's to the point where this has to be willful, willful ignorance at this point. It, it, it must be in their minds that it must be a, a spontaneous uprising. It has to be because that's the only thing that can happen. It's, it's really terrible that this is how bad first worldism is, particularly with, uh, with you know, the left comms. Because... Even, you know, the so-called tankies are a lot better on this kind of thing than they are. And, it, and it's disgusting to see people who are trying to pass themselves off as Marxists doing this kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's simply ridiculous. There must be a principled stance based on a correct analysis of the situation going on. And I believe that in my past video, I gave that. There are legitimate concerns that the people of Iran have, but this is definitely very obviously being twisted by the United States for its own purposes. And by that, we should be standing by the Iranian people that don't want their government run by the United States. They don't want their country sold out to U.S. imperialism. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.